Hello everyone and welcome to a world's preview here at LOL Class. In this video we'll be taking a look at both Europe and North America. Only a few short weeks ago, Cloud9 looked as if they were destined for relegations. But after an incredible series of wins, they not only secured their spot for next year, but edged out an impressive win over the highly favored Team Liquid in a best of 5 to take the third seed spot at Worlds. One of the key qualities that the Cloud9 squad showcased in their series against Liquid was the ability to control skirmishes and objectives in the mid game. This is largely thanks to the shot calling of Hai, former mid laner and now jungler of Cloud9. With Hai's return, C9 has shown a confidence and willingness to make bold and unpredictable plays. Cloud9's primary threat throughout relegations was Sneaky. Game after game, Sneaky put on a highlight reel, picking up multi kills in clutch situations to bring victory to his team. If Cloud9 is looking to pick up some victories at Worlds, a lot of the pressure lays on his shoulders. Going into Worlds, expect Balls and Incarnation to pick up a few new champions that they are willing to pull out. In the past, Balls has been a fairly supportive top laner, playing mainly Maokai and Rumble to give his team power in teamfights. Whether or not he'll be able to adapt well enough to the new meta of aggressive threats in time for Worlds could be the difference between a few victories. The long-standing veterans of League of Legends Esports, TSM has made it to Worlds yet again. After an emotional and rocky season, Team Solo Mid fell short right at the end, losing 0-3 to CLG in the LCS Summer Split Finals. All eyes will definitely be on Bjergsen this Worlds. Since joining the TSM squad, Bjerg has been the staple of this team, drawing the brunt of pick and bans and in-game focus from opponents. His ability to carry is perhaps unmatched within the NA region, and a lot of TSM's playstyle is centered around him because of this very reason. Bjergsen has always had an incredibly wide champion pool, but he's always shown dominance on assassins like Zed and LeBlanc. Over the last few months though, the mid lane has not been kind to the assassin meta, with safer control mage champions like Azir, Victor and Orianna being heavily favored. However, this looks to be changing heading into Worlds. A slurry of new champions are returning to the mid lane, with high pressures on champions like Echo, Twisted Fate, and even Gangplank being picked in China. While Bjergsen typically has no trouble dominating opponents within the NA region, he will be facing a lot more talent at Worlds, with star mid laners from all over the world attending. The number one seed for North America, Counterlogic Gaming, were consistently at the top of the pack during the summer split, but it's fair to say that few expected them to 3-0 TSM in the finals at MSG. Their performance brought a lot of attention to the team, and the expectations from fans are as high as they've ever been going into the group stages. After the tough loss against Team Liquid in the first round of playoffs in the spring split, Doublelift redefined his approach to the AD carry position on the competitive stage. Doublelift played a much more reserved and stable playstyle in the summer, which netted him among the highest KDAs, kill participations, and gold per minute in the entire league. Counter Logic Gaming's old approach to the draft was to save picks for Doublelift. Recently, however, the team has shown a preference to pick their AD carry early, often prioritizing Tristana and maximizing her incredible tower pushing ability during the mid game or Ash for easy initiations. This early pressure nets CLG an early gold lead by the time the mid game rolls around, buying valuable time for Zion Spartan to farm and become a threat himself. Perhaps the most important player for CLG throughout Worlds, though, will be Zion Spartan. This year's finals is a showcase for dominant top laners, and a tournament has never been so packed with raw talent. With his impressive mechanical skill, we should see CLG making a use of split push centric strategies that will give Zion the breathing room he needs to be aggressive and draw some attention. Well Time Teleport is the name of the game this year at Worlds. After bootcamping in Korea the past few weeks, CLG has had a chance to settle into the new patch and refine their winning formula. While playing teams from stronger regions may prove a massive challenge, we can still expect a lot from CLG, especially if they can get Zion Spartan in the top lane snowballing from the get go. Heading into Worlds, the two defining factors for Origin will be Zoas and Xpeke. Zoas and Xpeke again have proven themselves as legendary European players, backed by years of experience, and this year has been no different. Like we stated before, Worlds this year is the year of the top lane, and this couldn't be a more fitting time for Zoas to shine. In the European Finals against Fnatic, Zoas put up a great performance on Gangplank, in multiple games, the likes of which the West has never seen. He's going to need to continue this run going into the group stages if Origin has any hope of having a good performance. The bot lane duo of Niels and Mithy may be one of the most underrated and overlooked aspects of Origin. Arguably the most stable and consistent aspect of this team, Niels and Mithy will find themselves pitted against returning world champion Imp. While certainly the underdogs here, don't expect Niels and Mithy to falter in the lane. However, how they transition that strength into the mid game is what we need to look out for. 
Origin faces one of the hardest groups in the entire tournament, but they've shown that they're capable of pushing even the greatest teams to the limits, so a few upset wins shouldn't be that surprising at all. All we can say is that they look good and expect them to turn a few heads. After the Season 4 World Championship, Fnatic's original lineup split up except for one, Yellowstar. Yellowstar took on the responsibility of leading the team and continuing the legacy. The new Fnatic took second place in the spring season and made a serious case for themselves, challenging SKT in five games at MSI. Fnatic entered the summer split with Reckless as their AD carry. With his return, Fnatic went undefeated in the summer split, taking their only losses in the finals and proving themselves a true powerhouse in the LCS. Fnatic's strengths rely on extraordinary map pressure even when behind, backed by highly potent solo laners. Huni brings a massive champion pool into the top lane, making him unpredictable and impossible to counter. Champions like Riven, Cho'Gath and Jarvan prove that Huni has no problems adapting to any playstyle the team requires. Keep in mind, however, that Fnatic's top lane is not the only threat they carry. Despite being a newcomer to the LCS, Feviven has met and exceeded the EU mid lane stereotype and going toe to toe with Faker during MSI, making his presence on the Rift even more intimidating. Finally, their roster rounds out in the bot lane, where veterans Yellowstar and Reckless consistently dominate their opponents through impeccable mechanics and omnipresent map awareness. We can confidently say that Fnatic is the whole package and are certainly a favorite among their group to advance. While Lulex has been often criticized as the weakest member of H2K, he still brings a lot of good qualities to the team and has been one of the cornerstones of their strong run throughout the season. With several impressive performances on Gragas and Rek'Sai, Lulex has been able to pressure the early game and get his lanes ahead. It is true though, Lulex has definitely run into some problems as a jungler, often dying unexpectedly in the late game or making risky plays that simply don't pay off. Whether or not he'll be able to take his solid early game performances and extend that into the late game will be something to see at Worlds. H2K's bot lane is perhaps the centerpiece of the team, as there are a few bot lanes that can boast to the level of the synergy that Yarning and Kasing have achieved. After Kasing joined the team, H2K's bot lane seemed to become the main carry aspect of the team, often winning the lane and bringing that advantage into teamfights later on. If these two manage to win the lane, and RIU in the mid lane as well, it's very hard to stop this team rolling, and the team definitely has the potential to win against some of the higher seeded teams because of this. Thanks for watching this world's preview here at LOL Class. Let us know in the comment section what team you think has the strongest shot at taking it all. As always, if you're interested in more League of Legends content featuring the pros, visit us at lowclass.com.